Hey everybody, what you're looking at now is uh, a cast photo that was taken at the end of the day uh, after filming a Top Gear episode. And you'll notice that in this picture, there are two black people. One of them is Rory Reed, host of Top Gear, and the other is me. So if you're wondering, how on earth did I, your humble True Story Sunday host, end up in blackface on an episode of Top Gear? Well, stay tuned for this episode of True Story Sunday. So I work at a place called McWayne Ductile, Utah. And you've heard me talk about it before, but we make ductile iron pipe. Chances are that the water you drink or shower with comes from a pipe that was built in my factory. Um, or possibly by one of our sister companies if you live other places in the United States. Or even Canada. We ship things to Canada as well. My friends in Hawaii, we ship a lot of stuff to Hawaii too. <clears throat> Anyways, one day the phone rings at the front desk and it's a location scout for Top Gear UK. Um, our HR specialist answers it and they say, hey, we're filming an episode of Top Gear in Utah. I don't know what they said, but something like this. We're filming an episode of Top Gear in Utah and uh, we're filming at the Provo Airport and we were, they were just looking at like satellite images on Google Earth because they wanted a cool industrial looking place to film a chase scene in. So they were asking if they could do it here. Um, now my company is part of a large corporation and large corporations are, um, you know, very averse to taking chances and risks, right? in letting Top Gear come and, and drive fast around your facility is a risk because if somebody gets hurt, if there's an accident, um, then that's going to be really bad. There could have been, let's say Matt LeBlanc slides into a bundle of pipe, it falls over on him and it kills him. Next thing you know, we're um, part of an international news story about uh, how we killed Matt LeBlanc at McWayne Ducto, Utah. So. There was a whole, whole lot of hoops to jump through um, to get our, our corporate structure to approve of this. And right up until the last second where they were either gonna do it at our place or find somewhere else to do it, they were running out of time. <clears throat> um, you'd think that they would have this planned out like way in advance, but they didn't really. It was kind of like, uh, last minute winging it kind of thing, which is exactly my style. So that was kind of interesting uh, how they kind of waited till last minute. And a lot of things in that episode changed um, from what they had planned to what actually happened. Like the Bonneville Salt Flats, spoiler alert, it, it was flooded with water and they, they couldn't do what they wanted to do there. Um, na, 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 na. <clears throat> so, so I, I left work one day 100% sure that they were not going to let it happen. And kind of this HR person and I were the driving factor behind getting Top Gear to, to come to our plant. Like we were the ones who were excited about it. Because Top Gear to me, and really anybody who I think makes some kind of motorsports related video, Top Gear is the gold standard. Like the way they film that stuff, the way they show how much fun they're having, and the cool way that they show the cars with their, with their fancy cameras and their drones and all that stuff. That is what, um, when I first started out, that's what I always tried to emulate, that I wanted to, to have a, a Top Gear, a motorcycle version of Top Gear. And I know I've heard Everride talk about that before, how um, that's just something to look up to, the, like how good they are at doing what they do. So when I heard Top Gear wanted to come, I was like super excited because <clears throat> 10 years ago when I started this channel, that's what, uh, that's what inspired me. I wanted to tell stories the way they told stories. <coughs> oh, oh, I'm dying, excuse me. Over here is the Hare Krishna temple. Um, in the springtime, they have the color fest, and a whole bunch of uh, 
Mormons, oh look, here's a llama. They have llamas here. A whole bunch of Mormons come and throw uh, color, oh I spooked it, throw colored stuff at each other. It's cool. Pretend to be Hare Krishnas for a day, but don't have to shave your head or wear robes. It's nice. <clears throat> So I left work one day, 100% sure that they were going to say no. Um, and I'm driving and the HR person texts me, guess what, and I almost crashed the car because I just glanced at it. I, I pull over and she tells me the corporate approved it and, the, and Top Gear's coming. So because I have this video related job now, um, it became sort of my duty to escort them around the property and several times, like three or four times, this, this, the director of the episode and like his entourage came out to, to the plant and just wanted to walk around and get ideas for what they could do with the cars. So it was the director, it was a safety guy, it was like a, a production guy who just, um, he's the guy I worked with the most, his name was Nick, and he, his job is just to solve problems but like the most interesting problems in the world. Like the director says, I need to jump over here that Ken Block can launch over and I need to make sure that this is set up the way that, and this guy just makes it happen. So every day his job is like wildly different. He might be trying to figure out how to get cars um, to the middle of nowhere for a shoot or he might be trying to figure out how to arrange a bunch of ductile iron pipe and get jumps built over them so that they can uh, film this episode uh it's a job that you know when you're a kid you don't know exists but then you're like damn that sounds really cool i'd like to do that um i was hoping they'd take me with them but they didn't so i worked a lot with those guys i'd walk around with the director and he he would just come up with the most ridiculous ideas and then for example we had this large dump truck at the plant and he goes when the bed of that dump truck tips up how low to the ground is the back and I was like uh, why <laughs> because I know that we have to be like safe and I know that the BBC had a safety guy there with them and he would shoot down ideas if they were too um, crazy as well but um, he wanted to make a ramp up the back of that dump truck that Ken Block could jump off of during the car chase. And uh, I was like, hey, whatever your ideas are, you let me know. I'll take them to my people, my, my plant manager, general manager. And um, if they say yes, then we'll do it. Of course, they said no to that one. And so uh, unfortunately, we didn't do it. Um, but I think that it's, it's the BBC. They know what they're doing. If they say that we can safely build a ramp, and launch Ken Block off the back of it, and I believe him. Um, Cause they're, I think, the best at it in the world. So uh, there was a lot of things they wanted to do that they couldn't. Uh, they had so many things planned that they were gonna shoot there the whole day, but they kept getting shot down on all their ideas. So they changed their mind and just shot there for half the day. So they shot at the Provo Airport in the morning, and they shot at our property. Uh, in in the evening and I was getting really stressed out because we had put all of this work in and they were like two hours late and they had things planned that they couldn't get to and uh, I was like man I called in like every favor I had with friends at corporate to uh, make this happen and now you're showing up late and you're not going to do this cool stuff that you, they did a lot of cool stuff and it was fascinating for me to watch them work I remember when they first got there, I, um, they had this pickup truck with a camera rig with a stabilizer in the back of it. And uh, they also had a couple million dollars worth of cars. Uh, they brought a McLaren, a Mustang, and a Jaguar F-Type. And I was so busy taking pictures of the camera equipment because I was fascinated by it. Somebody nudged me. They're like, hey, why don't you take some pictures of the cars too? I was like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I'll get some of those as well. Um, so anyways, because I had gotten to know the crew on their several visits, 
they asked me if I wanted to be the guy who presented the challenge to the drivers when they arrived at the property. And so talk about checking something off your bucket list that you didn't even know existed, right? I was more than willing to do that. <clears throat> and when you work in the foundry, you get really dirty. You wear these green fireproof, uh, fire retardant clothing and it's super dirty and they saw some guys leaving one night at the end of the day into the work day and they're like we want you to look just like that tomorrow so i said okay and uh the the challenge was going to be the first thing that they filmed <clears throat> so when they started arriving and setting up they're like okay you need to go get ready and so i went and got some green clothes on <clears throat> and a hard hat with a face shield and a peacock feather this kind of shroud that protects the back of your neck from any molten iron and I uh, then I walked through the foundry because the greens that I had were clean and uh, I was rubbing myself against this machine <coughs> I was rubbing myself against this machine like the front of my body to get it all dirty I thought that everybody had gone home for the day and I turned but it's very loud so if there's people there um, it's understandable that you may not see them. So I, I'm rubbing the front of my body on this machine. I turn around, I'm rubbing my ass and my legs on this thing, just like twerking it on this machine. And I look up and there's two guys still finishing up cleaning their machine. And they're, one of them has a hose. He's sitting there with his hose, like spraying it somewhere, like in the opposite direction, staring at me like, what the heck is going on? And I just, didn't even didn't stop didn't explain anything waved at them took off to where they were uh, filming um, but one of the things that happens when you work in a foundry is that your face gets really dirty right you scratch your face or it's just it, it kind of um, when you work there you kind of get this baked on look uh, of, of dirt and crud and dust that just like your whole face just darkens up a little bit <clears throat> well I was in a hurry and I needed to darken up my face <laughs> and so I found this glove on the ground this really uh, dirty nasty glove and I was like this will do and I picked it up and I smeared it across my face <clears throat> but what I didn't realize was that I hadn't got my ears I hadn't really gotten like my my eyes my eyelids that kind of thing <clears throat> my neck it was just my face so in the episode, um, <laughs> when I present the card, they don't show my face. And when I watched the episode, I was like, well, of course they didn't. Because at the end of the day, after, after they were there for like seven hours, it seemed like, <coughs> cleaning up and everything after they were done filming, um, we took a big group picture. And I asked this guy, Nick, who I had kind of become friends with over this, over this time, setting all this stuff up. I was like, hey, do you guys ever take group pictures? <clears throat> and he goes, um, you might be able to get people to take a group picture, but I'm too shy, so it's up to you. So I was like, okay. So I started yelling, hey, everybody, we're taking a group picture. And Matt LeBlanc and Rory Reed and Chris Harris, they all came over and got everybody, uh, the rest, a lot of the crew members, and I handed my camera to some random guy. And then they snapped a couple pictures and then everybody left and I, I was like the last guy to leave that day left at like nine o'clock that night after everyone had finished cleaning up all their gear and uh, I got home and I looked at the picture and I was like you are shitting me I'm in blackface in this I was not only was I in blackface in the picture that meant that I was in blackface the entire time that these people were, that I was working with these people and escorting them around the property and and uh, making sure everyone was being safe and having a conversation with Rory Reed, the, the black host of Top Gear, about snowboarding in Utah or something. And I didn't realize that what a fool that I looked like. And so the next day at work, I went to a couple of the other employees who had stayed that night to help and over and just watch them do their thing and uh, <clears throat> was pretty frustrated with them because you know you, I'm like hey guys you couldn't have told me you couldn't have told me to go wash my face 
Uh, but it was funny. And I got a good story out of it, so that's that's all that matters. Uh, let's call it that good for the... I was on an episode of Top Gear and Blackface. This has been True Story Sunday. Thanks for watching.